All right, Mark, here's what has happened recently. It's come up in a couple of different ways, but I've been working with um, both a team that had some new leaders join and then a new leader that joined and had a new team working for them. And finally now looking at an organization that's bringing two teams together during an acquisition. And so the question that's come up in, in several different permutations, but I think is really the core question is, is how do I start with a new team? Now, this could be me entering into the team or someone new coming onto my team. But nonetheless, when it, when it comes to how do I start with a new team, I think the perspective can change, but a lot of the answers are, are really the same. And so when I, when I think about starting with a new team, one of the first things I want to think about is how am I kicking off that relationship? What is it that I'm asking and what is it that I'm volunteering to that group? Before I kind of tell you what my thoughts are on those, I just love to hear off the top of your head when you think about joining a new team, what's the kind of first couple of things that leap to mind for you as, as useful things to think about or do? I think whether you're leading a team or you're becoming part of a team, I think you need to do some research as to exactly why the people who are part of your team should be valued by you, should be valued by you. And you need to get out there and let people know what your evaluation, your positive evaluation of them is to try and start that process of, of coming in on a very kind of positive note. Here's my example for if you're leading a team, and this came from a leader of, of mine, and, and she was brilliant at this. At the start of any new project, uh, she put everybody in a circle, already sounds a bit a little bit hokey, doesn't it? Everybody in a circle, and would go round naming everybody one by one and saying why she was so delighted that this person was on the team. And it made you feel like, oh, I'm valued, I'm meant to be here, I'm, I'm, it meant you didn't start worried. Now, listen, as work, as work continued, you could often get worried that, that she was going to ax you. I mean, don't, you know, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, everything was, was, uh, you know, a picnic throughout, but it started off very, very positive, And I think there's a benefit to that. So I think about entering a team. How can I do a bit of due diligence and research and work out the people that I'm working with? And what are my opportunities to be able to go, hey, Michael, I just wanted to, to let you know, um, I think it's fantastic that we get to work together on this because I really like what you've been doing about X or Y or Z, or I really like what you did on that project, you know, out there. I, I really thought that was brilliant just to you know obviously it has to be genuine you can't make this stuff up because you're not going to be a good enough actor that they won't meld the insincerity immediately but what can you find out and how sincere can you be and start it on a good note that, that's my thoughts on it uh michael and i will say that what it, what it reminds me of as you were talking is i harken back to when i was at um general electric corporation and we had something that there was really effective we called new leader assimilation but what it really did was it harnessed um, some of the key anxieties and questions you have coming into a team, like, you know, what do they want from me? Um, you know, what do I need to know about them? What do I need to know about working in this team? Because one of the things about competence is it's, it's contextually and culturally defined. And so when you come into a new team, no matter how good you've been where you are, your competence is now subject to the culture and the nuance and the language that this team uses. So one of the first things you want to do is acknowledge you have things to learn uh, and have a few good questions. I like to kind of tap into my anxiety. So my question is, geez, I, 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 I wonder what they're hoping I'll get done here and say, hey, what needs to be done immediately or what are you hoping I'll focus on? If I'm thinking, I wonder how I'll fit in with the team, I say, so tell me, um, tell me about the team. What do I need to know to make it work well with this team? What do I need to know about working on this team? I did this recently with some people coming into a new team. And one of the, the you know, one of the things they got back was, look, uh, you know, you've got some big shoes to fill with the person who left. The person was beloved. By the way, they had 40 years of legacy knowledge, historical knowledge, this organization. You can't beat that. But you come in with an outside perspective because of things you've done in a different industry, and you need to bring that in with confidence. Don't try and be the person that left. Be the person that you need to be. Another one said simply, hey, one thing to know is that we're a team that actually has the open conversation. So don't wait. Just pick up the phone and ask, confront it, deal with it, 
And we like to make sure that if there's something, we don't drop bombshells at the meeting. We don't save them up. That's considered a real faux pas on our team. If you've got a problem, a concern, or an issue, you get on the phone, you let me know. We talk about it right away. We deal with things directly. We don't work it out in the team. That's where we worked things out before in the team. We're trying to move forward. So I think having a handful of stock questions that you just are willing to ask as you make as part of your process, and that may involve sitting down with each of those people individually, have a little bit deeper conversation about what it is they do, how they see what they do and what you do fitting together. Questions like, how do I work best with you? What do I do if it goes sideways? Having some of that social contracting is a great place to start. But with the team, you can ask a couple of questions and individually, you can start to do that social contracting so you can accelerate the process of working your way into that team and establishing yourself. So that's all we're looking to do really. We're not looking to do anything different. We're just looking to take control of it and accelerate it so it happens a lot quicker so you can get to the work that needs to be done. That's what comes to mind for me. Um, and so any final thoughts on that, Mark, before we uh, before we conclude this segment? That's brilliant. Let me add a question to that because my, my anxieties, and I think many people's anxieties, are like, I'm going to blow this. Like, especially when you get those great opportunities. You know, those opportunities that you've never got before. And so you, there's a little bit of, of anxiety there, a little bit of imposter syndrome, you know, in the best possible way happening there. And you worry, am I going to blow this? So, so I would say, if you're feeling that, why not be bold? And I know it can be difficult to be bold, but why not be bold and ask the question, look, I just, I just, just want to know, because I'm a little bit worried, what would I have to do to absolutely blow this one? Because, you know, it is a different culture. And often when you do go into different cultures, you do need to say, look, I'm not part of this family. What would I have to do to really annoy your grandma? I mean, what would make her hate me? Like, you don't want to make that kind of level of, of faux pas. You don't want to. And so we're, we're kind of doing the same thing of just relieving our anxiety by going, look, great. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to blow it. I now know socially, um, culturally, what would mean, you know, on a work level, what would cause me to blow it? I'm going to avoid that. Now, I have done this. I have done this with, with clients of mine who've gone, yeah, you know what? I went and asked the question and they said, look, whatever you do, don't do this. And the client's gone, gone. And you know what? I was going to do that. That was one of the things. Like, that was my go to. That was my go to. That was how I was going to start the whole thing. So, so it may seem an extreme question, but time and time again, it's absolutely come up trumps in terms of making sure that you don't blow it straight away. I think that's a great place to leave this one. Um, and people might say, well, what if I say, what can I do to blow it? That that's going to plant the specter in their minds that you're going to blow it. No, what happens after that is they tell you what you could do and now they believe you won't do it. So you've actually made yourself the better candidate in their eyes by addressing the thing that would make you not the better candidate. So awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, as always, we love your comments and questions. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comment box, you know, type them down there below. If it's a little more sensitive, you want to reach out to us directly, just direct messages, uh, you know, connect with us on LinkedIn. We'd love to hear your questions and we'll respond to as many of them as we can and give you the same kind of guidance and advice that we've been giving, you know, senior executives around the world for years for you in, in your situation today. Thanks a lot.